All right. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so I made a couple announcements earlier. Hope you guys saw. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about just working through a couple of these linear programming problems from start to finish. So, uh, you know, we've kind of, we spent time setting up problems. We spent time solving or at least grafting solutions to systems of inequalities and finding corner points and finding minimum and maximums over objective functions and all that. But it's all been kind of spread out. And today I want to put it all together and do a couple full examples from scratch. Uh, just to see how we put it all together. So I figure I owe you a couple of those. Um, so I have a couple that I want to do. And then with whatever time is left, I'll just turn you guys loose on the activity. So I don't expect me doing these problems to take the entire time. So uh, without further ado, I'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, so our first problem is as follows. Uh, so this will be, these problems will be stated in the style of 7.1 where it's like a word problem. Uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go from there and apply what we learned in 7.2 and 7.3 to solve these problems. Uh, okay, so let's say that you are looking to purchase some filing cabinets. So you are purchasing filing cabinets. Okay, suppose you have two types to choose from. Uh, and for simplicity, I'm just gonna call them X and Y. So there are two types of filing cabinets. There's X type and there's Y type. Uh, type X will cost $10 each. Uh, and each one takes up uh, six square feet. So that's six square feet of floor space. So of course, if you're trying to put filing cabinets in your room, they take up some amount of space on the floor. So we'll say six square feet of floor space. And each one has uh, eight cubic feet of filing space. This way here, feet of space for files. So it holds eight cubic feet of files for type X. Uh, for type Y, it's going to cost $20. Uh, it's going to take, it's going to uh, take, should be take up. I guess it is takes up. Takes up uh, eight square feet and holds uh, 12 cubic feet of files. So we got two types of filing cabinets, X and Y. X costs $10 each, takes up six square feet of floor space, and has eight cubic feet of space for files, whereas type Y costs $20, takes up eight square feet of floor space, and has 12 cubic feet of files. Okay. Um, so we have we have exactly one hundred forty dollars. So we have one hundred and forty dollars, and we have seventy-two feet of four, uh, square feet of four space available. So one hundred forty dollars and seventy-two square feet of floor space. Okay, this first part up here. So given all this, the question is how many of each type to buy? How many of each type of cabinet should you buy to maximize file storage? You want to store lots of files. You want to store as many files as you can. So how many should we buy of each kind to maximize file storage? And so, of course, we're constrained by how much money we have and by how much floor space we have available. Those are going to give us our constraints here. So that sort of puts a limit onto how much, uh, how many of these we can buy. So, you know, we should highlight the relevant information here, right? You know, it's like $10 each for type X. 
and takes up six square feet of floor space and holds eight cubic feet of files. Uh, whereas the other one, type Y, costs $20 and takes up eight square feet, but holds 12 cubic feet. And of course, we only have $140 and 72 square feet of floor space available. So these are things that we're going to have to keep in mind. You know, whenever we're doing one of these linear programming problems, there are certain questions you want to ask yourself when you go to set this up. And you guys have practiced this by now, so I won't harp on this too hard. But of course, we want to ask ourselves, what do I not know? And in this case, what I don't know is how many of each type of cabinet to buy. So I'm going to want a variable for each type of cabinet. Uh, oh, hang on. I did the same thing I did yesterday. I forgot to plug in my laptop again. There we go. My battery dies quickly. Um, OK, so anyway. So I don't know how much of each type of cabinet to buy. There's X and Y. I don't know. Uh, and what I need to know next is what is my objective function and what are my constraints? And so all this information I've highlighted here is going to go towards objective function and constraints. And so we need to put all of this together into those. So, OK, let's do that. So we're looking to maximize file storage. So if I want to write down the objective function first, we should remember that the objective function is the thing that I want to either maximize or minimize. So in this case, I want to maximize for file storage. So my objective function has to represent file storage. So my objective function has to, this handwriting is not looking good today. <laughs> my objection function, objective function has to represent file storage capacity. And as we saw in the problem, each cabinet afforded a different amount of file storage. So if I have cabinet X and uh, cabinet Y, how much file storage was allotted by uh, type X? It was eight cubic feet. So I'm going to have eight X, eight cubic feet for every uh, cabinet X that I buy. And for every type Y, I was afforded 12 cubic feet. So to get the total cubic feet of file storage that I'm getting between the two, I should add these together. And this will be my objective function. So I'll say p equals 8x plus 12y. So this is my objective function. This represents the total amount of file storage that I'll get uh, from the amount of x and y cabinets that I buy. OK, so I have my objective function. This is good. Next, I want my constraints. So what are the constraints? So I'm looking for my system of inequalities. Uh, what I would go ahead and do first is just go ahead and get my implicit constraints out of the way. Uh, so those are the ones that are not given in the problem, but I have to write them down so that the problem makes sense. And as I told you, they, they are pretty much always this, that x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is also greater than or equal to 0. And this should make sense in this problem because x and y represent the amount of cabinets that I'm buying of each type. And it would make no sense to purchase a negative number of cabinets. So I need to say that these are bigger than 0 at least. OK, so those are my implicit constraints. Next are the explicit ones. These are given explicitly in the problem from the information given. Uh, and so where are these constraints going to come from? Well, I mentioned earlier, they're probably going to come from two things. One, there's the amount of money that I have total. You know, I'm limited by the amount of money that I have to spend. And the other thing I'm limited by is the amount of square you know, uh, floor space that I have. You know, I only have so much room in my uh, wherever I'm putting these cabinets in my bedroom or my office or whatever. So I'm limited by money and I'm limited by floor space. So that's going to give me two more constraints, aka it's going to give me two more inequalities in my system that I'll have to take care of. So maybe there's one for money. I know I have $140 total. So I'm going to have some inequality that says 140 is greater than or equal to something. And this something should involve x and y. Well, how much did it cost for each type? It was $10 for X, and it was $20 for Y. So I'm going to have an inequality like this. 140 is greater than or equal to 10X plus 20Y. This is representing the money. OK. And then the other thing to represent is uh, floor space. How much square feet of floor space do I have? I have 72 available. So that's going to be 72 greater than or equal to something, depending on X and Y. Each uh, X cabinet takes up six square feet. 
and each y cabinet takes up eight square feet. So I have six x plus eight y. So this is my other constraint. And now I am done, these are all my constraints. So when looking for constraints, you always include your implicit ones. And then the other ones should come from the problem. And you're basically looking for certain things that you have a limited amount of, right, to get your constraints. Uh, maybe some, depending on how the problem is worded, you might have at least instead of at most. But anyway, in this problem at that most, I'm limited by $140. I'm limited by 72 square feet of floor space. So my inequalities look like this. Okay, so now we're good. We have an objective function and the constraints. Now we're basically in the setting of 7.3. And so what I need to do now is graph this, find the quarter points, and then find the maximum value of our objective function. So we're gonna graph the constraints. So I'll, draw my, I'll sketch our graph over here. Uh, because I know I have these two, I know I'm in the first quadrant. So I'm not gonna draw a whole big graph. I'm just basically gonna draw the first quadrant here. Uh, so we're gonna be shading up here. And so I just need to graph these two things. Um, and so we've spent a lot of time graphing individual things. Uh, so just, let me just tell you, I'll do these in colors just to highlight which is which. Let me tell you, uh, while conserving some space on my board, this inequality here, this money one, the one corresponding to the dollars, I'll draw it in red. This 140 greater than or equal to 10x plus 20y, it's gonna look like uh, the following. If I put this into an equation instead, if I turn this into an equals, and I put it in the slope intercept form, I believe what I get is, uh, y equals negative a half x uh, plus seven, I believe. If I were to subtract, yeah, okay. Let me do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think what I'm, what I'm going to get is, yeah, y equals negative one half x plus seven. If I were to simplify, turn this into an equation and simplify, solve for y to get into the slope intercept form, I should get this. Perhaps I'll leave that for you guys to check on your own. Uh, I trust you guys could do that calculation at this point uh, for this guy here. And so this line looks like this. Uh, y intercept is seven, the slope is negative a half. So every time I go to the right by two, I go down by one. Uh, so right by two, down by one, and so forth. And so it's gonna look something like this. And probably my numbering, you know, probably my scale is off, but roughly the line looks something like this. Okay. So I, I'm not going to claim that it hits at, what is that, seven? I'm not, it should not hit seven down there. Uh, but we'll see where maybe it should hit. Uh, next, I'm going to graph this guy. I'll do him in purple. And if I were to solve this one out, I think what I get for this one is y equals negative three fourths x plus nine, I believe. And so I need to add two more tick marks. Should be something like this, uh, a y-intercept of nine, and I have a slope of negative three fourths. So when I go to the right by three, I go down by four. So something like this, something like this. I need to draw it that high. Okay, so I have these two lines that come down like this. They both have negative slopes. They intersect at a point and they both hit the y-axis and the x-axis here. And so if I were to check where to shade for these inequalities um, by maybe testing a point, you know, uh, for the red one, I could maybe plug in zero, zero and I would get zero is less than or equal to 140. And that's true. So I'm gonna shade underneath the red line. And same thing here, if I were to plug in zero, zero, I'll get zero is less than or equal to 72. Again, that's true. So I'm shading under the purple line too. So it looks like I'm shading underneath these two lines and I'm shading to the right of the y-axis and 